Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Today we have a special guest with us. We have Daryl Boyce of the Scottish death metal band Scorachura. Welcome to the show, Daryl. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for having me. So, Daryl, tell people a little bit of history on the band, why and when you formed, and all that kind of stuff. Well, I wasn't one of the founding members. Um, it was started about maybe about this time ten years ago, so two thousand seven. Uh, it was our guitarist Owen and our drummer Tam. They used to kind of like they went to school together and stuff. Then started jamming together. Then decided to start a band. Then one of the former members, Dave, he ended up tying in with them then started playing music together, then I met them, uh, maybe, a f well, didn't meet them in person for maybe about another year, but it was through MySpace I found out about them, and then seen they were looking for a vocalist, and the current band I was in wasn't going to be doing much, so I thought, yeah, why not, I'll, I'll give it a shot in vocals, and then went on from there, jammed with them a couple of times, then... They asked if I wanted to do it full time. I was like, "Yeah, why not?" And uh, yeah, that's pretty much sort of how the band started and stuff. So, how long have they been around now? When did they start? Do you know they like around when was it like ten years ago or something? Yeah, two thousand and seven. About this, maybe about this time, ten years ago they started them. Um, but two thousand and seven, yeah. So okay, so when did you? personally start getting interested in like brutal type of death metal and stuff me personally I've always I've always been into the, the sort of death metal scene I mean everyone back in the day was you know into Slipknot and stuff like that Metallica like I kind of grew up with death metal my my mum actually introduced me to Morbid Angel and Cannibal Corpse and stuff so I kind of grew up that way with it, so it was always there with me, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and what's the metal scene like in Scotland? Um, it's, it's actually pretty good. It's, it has its ups and downs. Uh, that's probably the strongest it's been in a while, to be honest. Um, a lot of good bands and stuff coming out of it at the moment. And now, Daryl... When you first started with the band, when you when you joined the band, what were some of the bands you guys were opening up for? Um, the first major support slot we got was um, with Cryptopsy and Beneath the Massacre in 2008. Um, so, as you can imagine, a bunch of teenagers opening up for legends like Cryptopsy was a big deal for us. <laughs> and then... Um, we got support slots like um, we, we supported a board in 2010 or 11, I want to say. Again, that was a big deal. And then we opened for other bands like Malevolent Creation and stuff. So we were always getting pretty big gigs for the, the size of band we were. And so, okay, so tell us about now recording your album back in 2012. And it was kind of fun for me to see who mixed it and mastered it, knowing what they're doing now. So tell us a little bit about that album. Um, well, this is where it starts to get blurry with my vision. Seems like a long time ago we recorded <laughs> that album. Um, just thinking back, 2012, and it's a long time ago now. Um, we, we started recording it um, at a good buddy of ours, Nathan Wallace. Um, he had like a sort of home studio in his garage. So... Well, yeah, we'll go and we'll go record with him, and this was the first time we like sat down together and wrote an album as a band. Um, we released demos and EPs before, but like you know, like every other band, it's time to go record an album. It was, a, it was pretty laid back and um, pretty chilled out. Um, and then I can't I can't even remember how we got in touch with the guy from Mixing Master, but um, it was a Scott Fuller who used to play in Abysmal Dawn and is now drumming for Morbid Angel so that's pretty incredible on his front but 
escapes my memory how we, we got in touch with Scott. Um, no, nah, I cannot remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Daryl, is your mom all excited when you were like, Hey, Mom, the guy that mixed our album is now playing for Morbid Angel. <laughs> Well, when I actually told Mum that, she, she couldn't believe it. I've just about hit the floor. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So maybe you can remember following that album, what kind of touring you guys were doing. I mean, I knew you did some pretty big festivals. Yeah, uh, well, touring-wise, um, we didn't do anything major touring-wise. Mm -hmm. When the album came out, you know, a couple of weekend shows and stuff like some buddies of ours, um, and then we got asked to play Bloodstock Festival, which was a massive, massive deal for us. I mean, I couldn't believe we got asked to play it, so we're like, yeah, yeah of course we're going to do that. Uh, following that, we, um, we've done a few shows with uh, Malignancy from the States as well. We, get, we became pretty good friends with them, which is great, always meeting new people, and then Again, playing with people like Malignancy, who we've been looking up to for years. <laughs> and then following that, we done our first sort of run of European shows. And then with that was Berlin Death Fest, which was, again, an absolute amazing experience. I was got going from recording our first album to playing these festivals, <laughs> going to Europe for the first time and stuff. That must have been really fun for you guys to not only, you know, being over there, but seeing these. Those are legendary festivals, Daryl, both Bloodstock and the Berlin Death Fest. And now here you guys are playing them. Yeah, the, well, the first thing when we got asked to do Bloodstock, I was like, you're kidding me on. This is. <laughs> I've I'd, I'd been going to the festival for years beforehand, then all of a sudden, do you want to play that festival? Uh, yeah. Of course we wanted to play the festival. And then we also we also became friends with the guys who run Berlin Death Fest, the guys in Pighead. Mm -hmm. So and then the Denny, their guitars get in touch with us and would you guys want to play Berlin this year? Like, um yeah, of course we do. So we thought we'd do a few shows round about it as well. And it was great. I mean, I would much rather do Europe all the time if I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> so when did you guys sound, sign with uh, Gore House Productions? Um, it was about late, mid to late summer last year, 2016. Um, yeah, around about that time. I can't remember what month it was, but <laughs> mid, mid to late summer. Okay, so up until now, what have you guys, you know, what have been some of your struggles as a band? I mean, here you guys are, you know, out there in Scotland. I mean, as far as, you know, what are some of the struggles and obstacles that you guys faced for um, any reason? Well, the obvious reasons, or obvious struggles, should I say, sorry, would be, like, most brutal death metal bands is the money situation, you know. There's not a lot of money to be made in it, but and if you're going to be doing death metal, you're not doing it for the cash. You've got to be passionate about the music you play. Um, so that was a that was a big, massive like you know hit at first was the money side, mm -hmm. trying to get contacts to play further out further outside of Scotland, because I mean we were we were that band every single every week every month playing the same venues in Glasgow, mm -hmm. and we just. Like every band, they wanted to get out there. We wanted to do more than local shows. Uh, eventually, started finding promoters further down south from us, willing to put us on shows. And then we started breaking out a bit. And then struggles following that is not getting paid on the night by promoters and mm. won't go into names and stuff like that because got a list of them here. But um, I mean, it's. The same kind of struggles I'm, I'm guessing a lot of brutal death metal bands have in this scene. It's not an easy, not an easy scene to break into because everyone's trying to do the same thing, mm -hmm. trying to get to the same place. So let's talk a little bit now about the new album out now on Gorehouse Productions, Self Created Abyss. How did you approach this one musically, and what kind of sound were you guys going for? Um, well, musically, um. 
we kind of we'd got a new bass player on board for this um, a guy that I'd been trying to get and for months, years, and eventually he wasn't he wasn't doing anything band wise. So we thought, yeah, I'll start jamming with you guys. Then he joined full time. He brought a lot of old school aspects to the writing process, which was pretty cool. Um, and then this this one felt a lot more like a band effort than before. We kind of wanted more of an old school sound with, you know, like the sort of modern brutal death metal we do. But we like to keep the sort of old school vibe on it, mm -hmm. which I think we've managed to achieve with this album. And also, really quick, tell us who's who's actually in the band too. Um, you've got myself, uh, Daryl on the vocals. Um, You've got Owen McKendrick on the guitar, Derek Wright on bass, and Tamaran on the drums. And so tell us now also where this album was recorded and who mixed and mastered this one. We we recorded this one at our friend uh, Rory Doherty's in his home studio, Crush, Crush Ruby Studios. With um, we done vocals, guitars, and bass with him and our drummer went down south in England uh, to a little place called Darlington to a place um, called Ritual Sound to do the drums um, a couple of our mates went and recorded down there for drums and stuff and they said it was an incredible place to go so we thought we'll go, for, go to an actual studio for recording drums to get the best sound possible and it didn't disappoint, it was great. And then, like I said, we recorded with our friend Rory in his home studio for everything else. Then once that was done, we sent it off to a guy in Germany called Jörg Jukin at Sound Lodge. Uh, he knew exactly the kind of sound we wanted, like old school vibe, raw kit sound, and everything Everything that he delivered was excellent. In our part, we, we couldn't ask for a better mix and master of the album, to be honest. So then you were pretty happy with how it all came out? Yeah, we were, it was great, like, going back and listening to the first album and then listening to this album, it's <laughs> just a massive step, like, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> and what are some of the lyrical subjects on this album, Daryl? Um, we actually, we've done something a bit different with this, um, with the lyric writing of this album. We actually... I had a full album written, then we had some like band member issues and stuff, which I'm not going to get into because we could be here all day speaking about <laughs> that. Um, we had the album sorted, then stuff happened, so we had to rewrite basically the full album musically, and I still had all these lyrics, and we kind of, before all that happened, we were going to do a concept album, because I think there's not enough out there, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um so it all kind of follows our story, but the sort of theme on it's like the sort of harsh reality of like rape and domestic violence and stuff. And then we just threw in how like religion's all bullshit and stuff like that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but the main theme is like rape and domestic violence and stuff. And now, did you guys have any guests on this album? Uh, on track three of the album, Malignant Form of Inhumanity, we had uh, Danny Nelson from Malignancy. Um, he's always been one of my favourite vocalists in the scene. And, well, like I'd said before, we became friends with Malignancy a couple of years ago, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to ask Danny, see if he wants to do this. And he was, he was more than happy to do vocals on it, so... We're all pretty chuffed with the way that came out as well. It sounds fucking great. <laughs> it's a great song, and it's totally fitting to somebody from Malignancy, too. <laughs> with the, with that was, um, it wasn't like, oh, oh, we'll do that because of the name of the song. It was just, um, I can't even remember why we chose that song, to be honest, but it just kind of fell into place, I guess. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the cover artist and what your cover depicts. Uh, well, the artwork was done by Par Olufsen. I don't think he really needs a introduction. Everyone knows his work. Um, but kind of, we sent Par over some lyrics, and 
asked him if he could work with that, and it basically depicts um, like your inner demons and stuff like that, kind of haunting and stalking you as, like, I guess you go through life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's basically it. Like everything in the background of it's like all your demons watching you throughout <laughs> your entire life. Mm -hmm. And now you guys, you released a lyrical video and your CD just released. What have some of the early fan reactions and reviews been like? Um, to be honest, I'm, well, all of us are pretty happy how the album dropped and everyone's had nothing but nice things to say about it, how much we've progressed over the years. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been saying they can't believe it's, that it's us. Um, I mean, it's all been great. Everything, all the feedback, uh, all the reviews we've had from like websites and stuff as well. But like you said, the earlier fans are very impressed with the way we've progressed over the years. So I guess we're doing something right. <laughs> okay, so Daryl, you know, what are your thoughts on today's brutal death metal scene? I mean, there's so many bands out there, so, more, so many more keep coming on the scene. So what are your thoughts in general about the brutal death metal scene today? Um, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, a lot of it is starting to kind of sound the same. Everything's getting blurred into one. I mean, there is certain bands, some of them do stick out and Oh, this is this is different from the last band. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot, a lot of good bands in the scene, but I think everyone's trying to push for the exact same sound. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, it's good. Don't get me wrong. The fact that like everyone's so passionate about this scene now. Um, cause, I mean, if you go back, I don't know what ten years, how many brutal death metal bands were were all about? There weren't very many nowadays. There's a lot of them mm -hmm. pushing thing but every now and again you do get one that really sticks out and goes that bit further than every other band which is which is great obviously but everyone try to push for the same goal not everyone can make it which is I guess the harsh reality of it all isn't it it's, um, it's true no I was going to ask you too you know what do you think are some of the important elements that brutal death metal bands should have? But it almost sounds like maybe originality might be one of those things. Well, yeah, originality would would be one of those things. But I, I think a lot of brutal death metal bands nowadays lack the groove that a lot of death metal bands have, and they just go for like pummeling brutality. I mean, don't get me wrong, some bands can pull it off. If you go to a gig and it's four bands of pummeling brutality, you know what I mean? It's You've seen it three bands ago, but mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of brutal death metal bands should like also try and keep that groove in there, you know, mm -hmm. rather than just going through the brutal aspect of it all. And now for you guys, right, It's what are your plans for like the rest of the year as far as touring or anything you got going on? Uh, we've actually get quite a busy year ahead of us. Um, I think we're fully booked right up until October, wow. I think. Um, this month, then, well, two weeks, uh, yeah, well, seven days actually, sorry, uh, we're playing down at the Bristol Death Fest alongside bands like Immolation, Vader, Defeated Sanity, Cytotoxin. Um then the end of this month, we're away on tour with Party Cannon, Necrosis and Basement Torture Killings. We're doing our first local show in over a year, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Then we're going over to Ireland for a couple of shows, then back down to Liverpool on that tour. Um, after that, we've got a couple of shows down south as well, London and Nottingham with our, our mates in Burning the Dream as well. Um, June, we're away over to Slovakia for our Flesh Party Oatmeal. Oh, wow. That's a pretty stacked lineup as well. You, bands like Gutterlax, Disavowed, Party Cannon as well. <laughs> Loads more. Um, July, we're 
away, well, end of July, I think it is, yeah. We're away on tour with Corpse from the Netherlands. We're doing a tour around the Stonehenge Festival. Oh, That's wow. got bands like Morbid Angel and stuff on it as well, so... It's pretty stacked, and um, I don't think we've got, I don't actually think we've got anything in August. Um, after that, I think we've got a, a European tour in the works at the moment. I can't really say anything mm-hmm. because we've not been announced. It's another European festival we're doing round about that, but I can't say anything about it yet. Um, I think that's it so far, but I think there's still going to be more in the works this year. Okay, so then where can people go to learn more about the band and and what are some of the best sites that they could go to to learn about you guys so they could follow you and, and find out what tours you're on and that kind of thing? Um, the best ones for us, I think, would be our Facebook page and our Instagram and then obviously the Gore House page as well. They seem to be posting a fair amount about us at the moment. Um, I think if there's anywhere else. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know, just that. Uh, Social media, I suppose. Yeah, it looks like most of your information is up there on Facebook page. People could see, you know, your videos that you have posted, and you know, whenever you're going to a show, you usually have an event. So I think that's the best thing. And and well, you know, there you have it. Self Created Abyss is out now on Gore House Productions, so you can go order yourself a copy. And Daryl, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us tonight. And we wish you and the band all the best out on the road and with the new album. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure and hope we can do this again.